So this is a broad brush view of the geology of Virginia. I should say one other thing before I move beyond this. When I was showing physiographic provinces, of course this is a mid-Atlantic workshop. It's not just Virginia. And so if you were, say, to look at how these things extend around us, let's just do this, okay? You see that the Virginia provinces continue up into things, things change a bit in New England, but they pretty much continue up through New York. And the same things swing down through uh, the deeper south, you might say, as we move down into Georgia and Alabama. Things kind of truncate at the edge of the Appalachians, although the coastal plain, of course, would continue around. So a lot of these provinces are similar and extrapolatable um, throughout areas to the north and south of us. Okay. Let's zoom in a little closer on where we are. And the way this maps package is set up is the closer you zoom to the ground, the more detailed the maps get. So once again, we are here. If I were to zoom in even farther, you'd actually see the Festival Center, which is the building we're in. We are sitting in the middle of the Beekman Town Group. And the Beekman Town Group is primarily dolomites but it's a group, so it has lots of limestones as well. That's why we're sitting in one of the valley regions here. And what you also see through this area, I hope, are lots of black lines, which are faults, some of which reach the surface, some of which don't. But many of the zones through here in the valley and ridge are fault bounded. Um, it's no surprise then that when things like earthquakes happen, there's lots of subsurface features that can be reactivated and made use of not only here, but also to the west of here. The mass and Nutton ridges themselves are right here. These stand high because the blue is primarily uh, a sandstone. So it's a Silurian sandstone. It tends to hold the ridges up. On either side of that, though, is, again, a carbonate. This, this is the uh, Martinsburg formation, which is carbonaceous shales at the base. And the darker pink around each side is the Edinburgh um, Part of the reason I mentioned some of this is as you move just a little bit and these places that are blank are areas that we actually don't have detailed 1 to 24,000 scale maps. But as you go up towards a little bit north of here, you cross into a different world. And that different world is the Blue Ridge rocks, which are primarily um, granitoid gneisses, and these are about a billion year old rocks, give or take. They hold up much of the Blue Ridge, uh, flanked on either side by meta basalts. Um, and so we're actually situated in an area that's very close to the transition between the Valley and Ridge Province to the west, the Blue Ridge Province to the east. Uh, Blue Ridge rocks started much deeper in the crust and were elevated due to uh, collisional tectonics, as Bob said, about 300 million years ago that would have produced Himalayan sized mountains here. And what's left are, are the, the core, the Appalachian core that we see just a little bit to the east. Just to give you a brief idea of where we're going to be going on Wednesday, let me turn on, let's see, do, 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 do that one, okay? We will be leaving from Harrisonburg and drive, where's Harrisonburg? Right there, okay? We'll be leaving from Harrisonburg, we'll drive north right up the spine of 81, which goes right up the Great Valley. We'll get up to an area called New Market, which is right there. And then we're going to, from New Market, we're going to drive right through the Massanutten Mountain Ridges, okay, and have a beautiful overlook here of the valley. And then we're going to look at some of the carbonate rocks in the valley that are nicely folded. Uh, pretty spectacular outcrop there. Give you a rough idea. That's kind of what those it's a very large recumbent fold. The view from the top of the overlook is not what I clicked on. There we go. Um, that's sort of the view you get from the very top. You're sitting on top of the, of the sandstone rocks looking right out over Shenandoah Valley. From there, we will move directly to the east. And at the east, we'll move into the foothill rocks of a big the foothill of, of the Blue Ridge Mountains, but you're sitting right on top of a major fault, a major thrust that brought the Blue Ridge rocks up. And we're going to look at some things right near the fault. 
and then we'll get into the basement right up at Shenandoah National Park. And we'll talk a bit about the basement rocks up there. We'll work our way down Shenandoah National Park, all the way down the spine of it, all these stops going through here, until we actually get to another gap called Swift Run Gap. The gaps are the old, the low parts of the mountain chain that were the old roads that people used to get over the mountains. And some of them now have highways going through them, like Route 33 through here, and the one that we'll start at is called Thornton Gap, that's Route 211 to the north. Um, but from there, we'll again go back towards Harrisonburg, and we'll visit, finally, some fins of Brecher actually related to the Blue Ridge thrust itself. So we'll see lots of broken up rocks and fins of broken up rocks um, that are related to the big thrust package. If you want to see that in more detail, we'll have handouts for you, but I did stick a poster up. Um, I printed it out this morning, and I printed it out widthwise instead of lengthwise, but that's okay. Um, it shows you essentially where we're going to go on Wednesday and gives you a more detailed version of these maps if you want to take a look at that. I've got an interpretive cross-section on the bottom there, um, which is about what we think is going on in terms of the structure, but more on that on Wednesday. Okay. So, the only other thing that I was going to point out here very quickly before we move on, and this is just sort of uh, presage what John's going to talk about, that right there is where the mineral earthquakes were in Virginia, okay, right down here. Um, there, this map doesn't show a lot of detail for the structure in that area, uh, but it actually was very close to the North Anna nuclear power plant, and of which the North Anna nuclear power plant doesn't show that it's on any kind of a structure at all, which is completely wrong. In fact, they came across fault breccia rocks when they were building the, the, the power plant, and they kind of you know, kept, lo kept it low key. Um, anyway, but I'll let John talk about some of that stuff. So <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's where the earthquake was. Okay. So, how did this stuff get this way? So I'm going to switch back to standard PowerPoint and give you a run through of the last billion years of the eastern coast of North America. Um, so this is sort of shameless promotion. This is a project I did about five years ago with a, car, with a, uh, a colleague um, at uh, the University of New Mexico, Carl Karlstrom, and our project was we wanted to illustrate the development of Laurentia, okay? Laurentia is ancestral North America. It's, we used the term Laurentia up until about when Pangaea was formed, and then we switched to North America. Uh, you can just think of it as ancestral North America, but I might be uh, a slip of the tongue. I might say Laurentia, so I'm just going to warn you. Anyway, this is about what North America would have looked like about a billion years ago. I've used 950 million years ago as the date for this, but it's about a billion years ago. And a billion years ago was a very important period in the Earth's history in terms of tectonics because that's when probably the first really large supercontinent was formed, a supercontinent that uh, geologists call Rodinia. It's a Russian term. Um, and at that point, North America, or Laurentia, sat right at the core of the Rodinia supercontinent. The last stage of building this supercontinent was a, a collisional event called the Grenville orogeny. Orogeny is a term that just means collisional event or mountain building event. And much of this red belt here, and it would have extended all the way around to include part of the Llano province in Texas, up through the Blue Ridge, up through the Adirondacks in New York, up into some places in the Maritimes of Canada. These are all rocks that would have formed big Himalayan scale mountains, okay, the Grenville Mountains, the core of which is still up in New York State. Uh, the Adirondacks, the Adirondack Massif is essentially the Grenville, the best representation of the Grenville but the basement of the Blue Ridge, all the way down the Blue Ridge, is also Grenville Rocks. So this was one of the big mountain building events in this part of the world, about a billion years ago. Prior to that, we had an old core called the Canadian Shield 
of Laurentia or North America. And then we added slices bit by bit from about 2 billion years ago, which is when this came together, up to about 1 billion years ago, which is when all these other pieces formed around Laurentia. That's the first really significant tectonic event that we see in this part of the world. And to give you a rough idea of what I mean by building Rodinia, 